just what has been exhibited on the floor of the Senate. Mr. President, every day that we have opportunity and privilege of being alive to assemble here, our prayer has always been, Almighty God, ruler of heaven and earth, we beseech you to inspire and guide all our actions and counsel so that we may always walk in the path of justice, love, and charity to one another. And then we end it by saying, help us with our grace to do only those things that will promote the unity, happiness, and prosperity of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That is the wisdom, sir. Ordinarily, as a leader, and maybe today, it's important, Mr. President, that I convey this to the whip and then the leader. In other parliaments, leaders are not permitted to speak from where they are, because there are times when their sentiments will overrule the position that they hold. And therefore, we normally have one reserve chair where we can elect to go there and speak, so that we speak as normal senators with constituency, with everything. I don't want to say it. I have tried to resist saying it. But unfortunately, situations dictate that we put matters correctly. And it's important for the records. No senator in this chamber will accept the fact that the issue of electoral, uh, electoral sequence emanated from the, the Senate. It was not part of our bill. It was not. When the matter first came up, that there is a version in the House of Representatives that is talking about election sequence, this, this, pre this preamble is very important, Mr. President. I, I hope you will patient with me. All of us in the leadership were in the meeting. And we were asked to convert support from members of the House of Representatives so that we can jettison that provision. In the first place, Senator Ade insisted that Court has determined this matter. Nobody should bring this matter in that meeting. I remember. And then, when we came out, the Senate President told me, well, you say you have a lot of colleagues. Try and work this out. I had three meetings with members of the House of Representatives. One, even at the airport. And I will mention name. One of the members, Honorable Gololo, said to me, leader, where were you when the entire country was abusing or saying that we were elected simply because of Mr. President? You didn't defend us. And in any case, the primary purpose of the insertion of this provision was that we have a situation where we have an unstable democracy in the sense that once you elect a president, the bond will go effect, everybody elect along that way, and therefore we continue to have one party oppressing the others. And we felt that if an election is done the other way around, we might be able to enrich the democratic structure. That was what it, and I reported to you. So for anybody to come here and go and give press conference and say that the Senate has taken a position against Mr. President, it is the most uncharitable thing anybody can do. It does not befit his office as a senator. But happily enough, happily enough, Senator Amwagege came here and had the courage to apologize over that statement. But it's much more than that. There are some sections in this country where you dare not talk against the president. And there are senators from that place. By, the, by implication is that he is putting the life of these senators at risk. I cannot be a leader here if I cannot protect each and every one of you. I have no business being your leader. <laughs> Shut up, my friend. <laughs> so. Proceeding from that, sir. Proceeding from that, sir. For anybody to have the privilege, for anybody to have the privilege of being elected as a senator, it is an obligation upon you to consider, reconsider, evaluate anything that is going to come out from your mouth. You must be very careful. Mr. President, if I have cause to fight you today, I will fight you. So for anybody to go there and be dividing the Senate and say this are pro Salaki and this, I have not had, I have not attended any meeting to be pro Salaki. So 
the end result of what I'm trying to say is that I agree with what the leader has said. But somewhere along the line, I have found a convenient way of disagreeing with him. As a family, we must have discipline. And we must leave discipline for this institution. And the only way we can do it is that people must not only be ready to bear the consequence of the, what they are saying, but that they must gauge what they are saying and the probable consequence of what they are saying. I came from a constituency where I had more than 40 calls from very prominent people. For four years of my life, I have stayed with Mr. President from everywhere going with him before he became president. Some of those claiming to be for president only came and said they are pro him because he became president. They were not there before. And, and let me tell you what is even paining me. What is even paining me? Those, I don't know the name, I don't know, I have never attended any meeting. But those who are purporting to do this, they were in this chamber when we took a unanimous decision that we are not going to confirm any uh, appointment from Mr. President. Where were they? Gentlemen, my distinguished colleagues, let's be honest, let's take our sentiment, let us look at this institution. We are all going to live here, whether we like it or not, either through that or whatever. But this institution will remain, and we must be very, very careful about it.